Hello. Hello. If you're watching TV at tea time on Saturday, I'm sure you've recognised that those towering terrors were the tripods, the most menacing stars of the BBC's latest sci-fi series. So watch out, Doctor Who. And we're going to be on our best behaviour today because I don't fancy being stood on by one of those giant feet. You can see more of the tripods later, and we'll even meet some of the human stars of the series too. But right now, you can meet a very good friend who's come along to help Michael and I while Janet's away, because we really miss not having a girl in the studio. Oh, yes, yeah. It's know. Sarah. <laughs> hey. Hello. Hi. It's great to be able to help out. It really is. I just wish it wasn't. Uh, it was for a slightly happier reason. All good wishes to Janet. But after yeah. I saw your brilliant uh, debut last Thursday, you couldn't keep me away. Mm. But the good news about Janet is that she's feeling much better and she's coming out of hospital today, so she should be back with you on Thursday. That's good. Great. Well, Michael and I went to see Janet in hospital yesterday on her birthday and she said she's been really cheered up by all your cards and get well messages and there's, there's lots of cards here. There's a whole stack to send to her, including lots of birthday cards as well. And we took along a birthday cake for her and all the nurses had a slice of it. And I'd like to say a big thank you as well to all the kind people who've sent good luck messages to me after my very first Blue Peter program. What? Thank you. I thought you were trying I can remember my first day. Oh, it was, it was a nightmare. What was it like for you, Sarah? I was sitting on the edge of my seat because last Thursday because I remember just shaking and my face <laughs> quivering. I but was, Thursday, yeah. I watched not a single quiver there. It you was, it was there. A real it trooper. Was. Yeah, <laughs> I thought you were great. Well, now, back to the tripods. And I must say, they're being fairly docile here, I'm happy to say, in the studio. The story is set in the year 2089 when the whole Earth is ruled by the tripods and they wield their power in the most extraordinary way by the means of psychoelectronic caps that they fit onto people's heads so that if you're given one you can't think clearly or behave like an intelligent human being. The capping ceremony always takes place when boys and girls reach the age of 16 and just in case you missed the first episode Here's the moment when the whole village watches as one of the boys faces a tripod for his capping. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite so weird or scary on television before. And as you can imagine, creating a monster like a tripod involves an awful lot of television trickery. In fact, it's one of the most difficult challenges ever undertaken by the BBC Special Effects Department. Now, I have that piece of information on very good authority because uh, one of their members is someone who's very close to Blue Peter. He's Janet's dad, Mike Ellis. <laughs> Welcome to the programme. It's pretty Janet's not here to well, talk um... to you. Never mind. Now, making a model like the one we have in front of us, Mike, would seem to me to be difficult enough. But as for creating a tripod that's nearly 80 feet mm -hmm. tall, that seems to be impossible. How did you do it? Well, it's done by a process known as colour separation overlay. Now, is that, that's the technique that uh, I saw being used on Blue Peter last Thursday when mm. the South Pole was recreated here in the studio. And in very simple terms, it, that's when one picture is laid on top of the other yeah. electronically. But not so simple, I would imagine, to get the effect, as you have in tripods, of a boy being lifted out of the pond mm. by one of the monsters. How, how was that done? Well, apart from the how difficult it was to actually get the shot to look realistic. You've also got the problem of the time it takes to do it. Mm. Um, when you do it in the studio, you usually have just the two images, a foreground and a background. Whereas with the tripods, we've probably got many, many more than that involved. Now, in the sequence we saw where the tripod is standing in the water, for example, there mm. are no less than five separate shots. Well, on that shot, you really can't see the drawing at all. It just looks like the one image, doesn't it? And that's all thanks to you, isn't it? Well, thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Now, all the uh, help that one can get from electronics apart, I'm sure that the sheer physical size of the tripods mm. must have given you quite a few headaches. I mean, we've got one foot here in the studio, and it's taking up an awful lot of room. How big is it? Well, this one's nine feet across. And um, what's that? The, um, well, that ball is a socket that enables it to walk firmly on the ground and the leg is 30 feet up. Goodness me. Now, it's quite happy to sit here on a nice smooth studio floor on this surface, but were there any surfaces on which it wasn't quite so happy? Well, it wasn't very happy on the water. We built a scaffolding trestle to put into the water to place the leg on top, but between the time we did the recce and the time we actually came to do the filming, the water level dropped. So. <laughs> The foot was standing way clear of the water. 
<laughs> How did you get over that one? Well, all the visual effects team stood round on the table and I jumped up and down. And I bet they did. I bet they did. Until <laughs> they went down. It took an hour. Of jumping up and down? Yeah. Forget yeah. aerobics. Come and join the special effects department, then. <laughs> the main characters in the story are three boys. They are Will, Henry's cousin, Henry himself, and Jean-Paul, who's nicknamed Beanpole. Now, all three manage to escape capping, and they go in search of the free men, who are other people who manage to stay uncapped and who are determined to destroy the tripods. But on their journey, the boys find themselves perilously close to their enemy.